is the network service of the NTA. We now join our outside broadcast crew for a live telecast. As we say, O God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders right, help our youth be true to know, in love and honesty to grow, living just and true, great lofty highs attain, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Please, can we take our seats? A very warm good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Engineer Ben O.C. Oko, fellow of the Nigerian Site of Engineers, the director of programs for today's event with my sister, Faith. Oche, please, can we take our seats, please? Can we take our seats? Sorry. The chairman of the 29th Engineering Assembly, His Excellency, Engineer David Mweze Umai, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, the Governor of Ebony State. The Chief Host of the 29th Engineering Assembly, His Excellency Raji Fashola, ably represented by the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, a very distinguished engineer, Abu Bakr D. Aliu, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Please, can we put our hands together for him? The President of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Engineer Ale Ale Masuya Rabiu, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Fellow of the American Society of Civil Engineers. The representative of the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General G.A.T. Ochiwano. Distinguished past presidents of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, past presidents of the Nigerian Site of Engineers, Past deputy governors here present, distinguished president of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Bagana Mohammed, our royal fathers who are here present, our invited guests, distinguished engineers, technologists, technicians, and craftsmen here present, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly, respectfully, and honorably observed. The Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, was established in 1970 with the core mandate to regulate the practice of engineering in Nigeria in all its aspects and ramifications. Since then, Koren has remained committed to its mandate and its vision of promoting and ensuring the highest standards of professionalism in engineering practice in Nigeria, and has also played a pivotal role in fostering the speedy acquisition of relevant engineering and technological skills through continuous professional development and in ensuring that engineering practice is practiced to improve the quality of life and promote sustainable development. It was upon this backdrop that current under the presidency of engineer Ibrahim Khalil Inua, FNSC, introduced the engineering assembly with a view to promoting and ensuring stability and cooperation within the engineering family in line with the mission of current and evaluating matters of mutual interest relating to the engineering profession. The inaugural edition of the engineering assembly was held in 1992 in Lagos with a team engineering in Nigeria, Koren and its practitioners. Since then, Koren Assembly, since then, the Koren Assembly 
the biggest engineering gathering in Africa, has remained an annual event of Koren, where engineering professionals and practitioners gather to X-ray issues of national importance for the advancement of research, fostering of intellectual exchange among engineering practitioners, researchers, educators, policymakers, industry professionals, and experts to fashion a new roadmap for policymakers with a particular focus on opportunities and constraints in developing our country, Nigeria. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the President of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Engineer Ale, Ale Masuya Rabiu, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Fellow of the American Society of Civil Engineers, I warmly welcome you to the 29th Engineering Assembly with the team advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. Seated in this auditorium, the African Hall of the International Conference Center, Abuja, very distinguished personalities who have traveled from different parts of this country to be part of this history-making and epoch-making event. It's, my, it's therefore my pleasure to warmly invite to present his introductory remarks, the Registrar of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Engineer Professor Joseph Obofoni Odi Gure, member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Please, can we put our hands together for him, please? Good morning, everybody. Please allow me to stand on the well-established protocol. I want to welcome everybody and to tell, say we are grateful you are here. In the next two days, we'll be asked questions as Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. We'll be asked about our stewardship and purpose. We will reflect on what we have been doing. Of course, we know there are a lot of questions to be asked. And there are, of course, through those questions, we hope to develop new pathways of regulating engineering in our educational institutions and the engineering practice in Nigeria as a whole. Today and tomorrow, we'll be examining our vision, we'll be examining the purpose of our programs, and of course, how we are implementing them and what we have learned during this process of implementation. At the end, we'll be conceptualizing new pathways. We'll be looking at the implementation of some of the basic programs we have already the outcome-based education that we are driving as a council. We'll be looking at what we are proposing, one graduate, one skill, from all our tertiary institutions to see how we can move our nation to be on the platform of greater productivity, greater economic growth. We quite understand that the small-scale industry still holds the key to our national establishment, national purpose, and the change that we so much desire to see in our economy. We also be looking at the indexing we have done, indexing the proposed indexing of all engineering students we have in our nation. We'll be looking at some of the good things that lie in stock, of course, which we don't know, which we propose to us. Today, we are thankful to the Minister, Federal Minister of Works, who has helped us in conceptualizing some of this project. We are thankful to the Ministry of Education that has agreed to set up a committee to look into the implementation of the outcome-based learning in our Nigerian universities and tertiary institutions. We are hoping the proposed uh, committee will soon be inaugurated and we can move ahead as a nation. We are also going to look at the technical schools. Koren has proposed a meeting for all technical schools sometime in December. And we will liaison with all of you present here to see how we can appoint people into those committees. Our workshops have been planned for six geopolitical zones in implementing the outcome-based education in Nigeria. We also look forward to hearing from you how these things will be implemented. I want to assure you that this uh, uh, Korean Assembly is purposeful and well-loaded. The vision is clear, and we depend on you to successfully implement what we are doing. 
On this note, I want to also appreciate the President of Council, who has been very magnanimous in allowing us to implement the mandates that we have so far. And of course, the Council of uh, the Council for the Council of Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. We say thank you. We say thank you to the royal fathers that are here. I, I want to appreciate you, sir. We have met severally, and I am very grateful for each encounter we have had together. My governor from Ebony State, I want to tell you thank you, sir. I remember the picture we took together. It's still with me, and I'm going to keep it for as long as I can. I want to greet every one of you that is here. My minister, good morning, sir. My governor, good morning, sir. Uh, the Senate president, OK, it's already here. The Senate president representative, good morning, sir. You are welcome to the 29th Engineering Assembly. Every member of the House of Representatives, distinguished Senate, honorable members of the House of Representatives here, we want to greet you and tell you you are welcome to our midst. Fellow engineers, senior engineers, good morning, and you are welcome to our midst. We are looking forward to a fruitful deliberation. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. We can actually do better than that. Let's put our hands together for the registrar. Quickly, before we go to the next item, let me Acknowledge the presence of the former minister of FCT, if I'm not making a mistake, Senator Adamu Aliero. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. I can still remember the face, recognize the face. Let me acknowledge the presence of His Royal Highness Suleiman Yamba, Emir of Akiri. You are welcome, sir. I also have Engineer Dr. A. Commodore A.A. A. Shinkafi, MNSC MNI, representing the Chief of Air Staff. We also have in our midst the, our host, the Honorable Minister of FCT. He's represented by his Chief of Staff, I've been informed that the FCT Minister is represented by his Chief of Staff. In the course of the program, we are going to introduce him appropriately. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. He is an accomplished engineer with over 30 years of engineering and management experience. He, he also has a physical and moral precision of mind which has enabled him all through his varied career to rise above the ordinary levels of his generation. He has served the engineering profession in various capacities, including chairman of the Nigerian Site of Engineers, Kanu Branch, and also three-time vice president of the Nigerian Site of Engineers for the years 2010, 2011, and 2012. He's a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of Civil Engineers and a fellow of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Since his election as the President of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria in 2019, Koren has witnessed a great transformation under his leadership. His distinctive style of leadership can be described as a methodological breakthrough that is unique in the annals of contemporary leadership. He has brought quality, excellence, eloquence, and resourcefulness to the leadership of Koren. These are the qualities and moral fiber of the man who pilots the affairs of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to invite for his welcome address the President of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, a very distinguished engineer, Ali. Ale Masuya Rabiu, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and fellow of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Please, can we put our hands together for him?
Thank you very much. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Chairman of this very important occasion, His Excellency Engineer David Mweze Umahi, FNSE, FNATI, Governor of Abonyi State. The chief host, His Excellency Babatunde Raji Fashola SAN, Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, here very ably represented by one of our own, Honorable Minister of State, Works and Housing, Engineer Wakar D. Aliu, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers. Our good host, Mohammed Musa Bello, Honorable Minister of the FCT, I understand is represented by his Chief of Staff. Your Excellencies, State Governors here present, those who are represented. His Excellency, the President of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, here represented by His Excellency, Alaja Ademo Alerio, former Governor of uh, Kebbi State, now a distinguished senator and chairman Senate Committee of Works. His Royal Highness Justice C. D. Muhammad Bagi I, JSC retired, the Emir of Lafia and chairman of Count National State Council of Chiefs, here today very ably, ably represented by our royal father, the Andoma of Doma, Al Haji Amodo Oga Onao, OON. He is here with an array of traditional rulers from Nasarawa State. The Sangarin Shabu is here, Elijah Umar Bwala. The Akuke Akiri is here. And uh, the Serkin Awuma is also here. We appreciate your coming, sirs. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the 29th Korean Engineering Assembly, the largest gathering of engineering practitioners in Nigeria. In 2020, the assembly could not hold as a result of the lockdown occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. We thank the Almighty Allah for sparing our lives to be able to witness this auspicious occasion today. The Engineering Assembly is an innovation of Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, aimed at bringing together engineering practitioners, relevant stakeholders, and friends of the engineering profession in Nigeria. A brief history of the Assembly has already been taken by the ABLE MC. So let me say that I'm particularly pleased to welcome everyone to this assembly, the chairman of this occasion, our own engineer, Umahi. Let me appreciate His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, the CFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who due to his immense love for Nigerian professionals, saved the country from years of foreign domination in the science and technology subsector of the Nigerian economy. In what could be described as a bold move towards enhancing the socioeconomic standing of the professionals in the science, engineering, and technological disciplines, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria issued Executive Order No. 5 on Friday, February 2, 2018. In the proclamation entitled Presidential Executive Order for Planning and Execution of Projects, Promotion of Nigerian Contact in Contracts in Science, Engineering, and Technology, President Buhari, in pursuant to the authority vested in him by the Constitution, 
signed the order making it mandatory for all ministries, departments, and agencies of government to engage indigenous professionals in the planning, design, and execution of national security projects not maximize in-country capacity in all contracts and transactions with science, engineering, and technology components. By this act, the President has certainly confirmed that Nigerian professionals are not bereft of the skills, expertise, and competence to perform like their foreign counterparts, but for the seeming preference of expatriates which has not only been counterproductive, but has also led to massive capital flights. Directly connected to the above and with the same commitment of ensuring that Nigerians become active participants in all sectors of the Nigerian economy and deepening of engineering profession among others, the President also assented to Engineers Registration, etc. Amendment Act 2018 the act broadened the authorities of Koren with far-reaching powers of prosecution of infractions, ensuring capacity building and monitoring local content development in the engineering industry. With these two gestures, I want to, on behalf of the engineering family, thank Mr. President. Let me respectfully acknowledge in our midst, once again, the chairman of this occasion, Governor of Ebony State, His Excellency Engineer David Nweze Umahi, FNSC FNATI. We appreciate you for your love for the engineering profession. You are making engineer, engineering practitioners proud in what you are doing in Ebony State. Our chief host, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, His Excellency Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, SAN, welcome you, here represented by one of our own two. Our host, the Honorable Minister of the FCT, we also welcome you. It is heartwarming to welcome all dignitaries, including the leadership and members of the National Assembly, executive governors, members of the Federal and State Executive Councils here present, captains of industry, chief executives of other professional and regulatory bodies, and members of the diplomatic corps here present. Let me also once again welcome our royal fathers. The theme for this year's assembly is advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. The theme has been carefully chosen taking cognizance of our nation's quest for rapid and sustained infrastructural and economic growth, which can only be achieved by breaking geographical barriers to the practice of engineering. Indeed, the experience of the COVID-19 calls for this. Hence, the discussions on the various selected sub-themes will expectedly address the theme and effectively demonstrate engineering practice beyond the COVID-19 era. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for emphasis, let me briefly review some salient gains of the Korean Act, the new Korean Act. Council has been endowed with the powers to regulate and control, amongst others, the following. Mandatory attachment of Nigerians to expatriate engineers on major projects to understudy them from inception, ensuring that all foreign engineering firms establish their design offices in Nigeria, granting of compulsory attestation to all expatriate quota applications that there are no qualified and competent Nigerians for any job in question at the time of application and that granting of the said expatriate quota shall be contingent on training of such number of persons as may be required for the execution of that particular job. Ensuring that before being allowed to practice in Nigeria, such foreign engineering practitioners granted work permit must register with the council 
and obtain such licenses, including practicing licenses, as may be required from time to time. In consonance with this, Council has established corporate synergies with the Ministry of Interior, the Corporate Affairs Commission, and other departments and agencies of government whose responsibilities have something to do with any of the above. This assembly will receive progress reports on the level of cooperation or otherwise from stakeholders across the sectors. Continuing professional development. As the saying goes, to whom much is given, much is also expected. Council is much aware of the inherent challenges to the gains of the amendment, which is about the capacity of the Nigerian practitioners and also practicing in line with global best practices. Current is therefore planning to institute continuing professional development as a compulsory requirement for all practitioners applying for practice license. CPD in an engineering context, when introduced, is particularly aimed at ensuring the systematic improvement and broadening of knowledge, skill, and development of personal qualities for the execution of professional and technical duties. Uh, it is important to bear in mind at this juncture that Council will soon promulgate regulations on the introduction of the CPD system as part of the requirement for obtaining professional and firm practice license. It will no longer be a business as usual where in the past you just pay your practice uh, fee and uh, download your license. You have to show evidence of practice of the engineering profession. Uh, in the course of this assembly, a detailed paper will be presented by the chairman of the Council Committee on CPD, Engineer George Chukulewa, which has been charged with the responsibility of working out the modalities. Outcome-based engineering education. Current cares to advance the frontiers of engineering practice saw evolving innovations in engineering education. The introduction of the outcome-based education in engineering is another effort to enhance capacity and mobility of registered engineering practitioners in Nigeria. The proponent of the OBE is the International Engineering Alliance, which comprises members from 35 jurisdictions within 26 countries. Korean has been desirous of becoming a member of this alliance in a bid to internationalize Nigerian engineering qualifications and thereby improve the quality, productivity, and mobility of Nigerian engineers. Alongside the present system of education, Koren has redesigned its accreditation process to be substantially equivalent to that of the signatories of Washington Accord. This has given Koren the opportunity to benchmark its processes with those of its mentors assigned by Washington Accord. It has also helped Nigerian engineering education to conform with international best practices and Koren could be considered to be ready for provisional signatory status of Washington Accord. We reported at the last assembly the efforts we have made so far, right from the presidency of engineer Kashim Ali up to the time we took over. Uh, we had made some substantial progress, but uh, COVID-19 uh, you know, stalled our progress. And I believe that in the next couple of months, the IEA itself will be reactivated and Korean will also reactivate its application. The overall objective is for Council to encourage the engineering faculties to adopt OBE system and thus, and thus graduate globally recognized engineers. Technical and vocational education training. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, technical and vocational education training, TVET, and in particular, engineering craftsmen and technicians constitute a very important component of the value chain in the engineering service delivery. 
They are very essential in manufacturing, production, maintenance, and repair of engineering products. While the successful practice of engineering involves the division of labor of an interdependent team of people with diverse degrees of skills and expertise, statistics available in Koren has shown that there are more engineers than engineering technicians and craftsmen put together. And an era of inverted pyramid of the skill mix has created a wide skill gap. It is therefore important to scale up action on encouraging young people to train as engineering technicians and craftsmen in order to revamp technical education. There is also the issue of the death of indigenous engineering technicians and craftsmen in engineering services, which is a major economic setback. And as the skills gap continues to widen, there has been huge capital flight as expatriates come in to fill the lacuna at the detriment of the country. It was estimated that the country loses huge resources to foreign engineering technicians and craftsmen as the local built environment fails to generate the required manpower. According to experts, more than 80% of masons, carpenters, steel fabricators, plumbers, electricians, painters, and tilers found on construction sites across the length and breadth of Nigeria are foreigners from neighboring countries of Cameroon, Niger, Togo, and Ghana. Some firms go as far as China to employ engineering technicians and craftsmen. The skill gap has continued to increase over the years due to the retirement of aged engineering technicians and craftsmen without the young generation being sufficiently groomed to take over from them. The situation is compounded by the absence of a well-structured TVET, an apprenticeship system for workmen in technical colleges. Technical colleges are the institutions which produce members of the engineering craftsmen cadre, And they are no more available. Where they are, they are in dilapidated states. In the 1960s through the 70s, technical colleges were deprived of the TVET in Nigeria with sprawling structures, well-equipped laboratories and workshops, sound and robust staffing, eager to learn and proud students and everything else that promoted a robust technical education system in Nigeria. The present condition of technical colleges is a far cry, far cry from that of years past. Nowadays, technical colleges in Nigeria have become, like I said, dilapidated and moribund. Their structures are unshackled with roofs of classrooms blown off walls on the floor, workshop and laboratory equipment obsolete, and they have become unserviceable, power supply cut off with almost all looking ghostly. In order to look at possible ways of reversing the situation, Koren organized a retreat in Calabar and a stakeholders workshop in Abuja in the year 2017. The communique of the two conferences lamented the situation and made a clarion call on all stakeholders, particularly state governors, who these technical colleges fall under their purview. Federal and local governments to urgently take steps towards the resuscitation of TVET in Nigeria present administration in the country is showing some, showing some seriousness in infrastructural development across all sectors of the economy. Since there can be no sustainable development in the nation's infrastructure, if technical colleges are allowed to go extinct, Korean is very conscious of the critical role of TVET, the role that TVET is expected to play if the nation is to achieve sustainable job and wealth creation amongst its youth and other vulnerable groups. 
This realization led Koren to intensify its engagement with the Committee of Deans of Engineering and Technology in Nigerian Universities, CODET, and the Committee of Deans and Engineering Technology in uh, Nigerian Polytechnics, CompoDET, and recently made the chairman of these two bodies members of the Engineering and Training Committee of Council. Korea has also initiated efforts to create the third body of COPTEC to represent the technical colleges, all geared towards the deepening of TVET at the grassroots of the engineering family pyramid. Furthermore, Council is going to closely work with the MBTE as the National Board for Technical Education. The National Business and Technical Examination Board, NAPTEP, whose DG will be presenting a paper at this assembly, and the COPTEC with the full involvement of NATE, NICET, and NAEG to correct the positioning of the inverted pyramid amongst the engineering family in terms of knowledge, skills, competence, proficiency, and promoting strategic alliance and spirit of teamwork. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is in the same spirit of indigenous capacity building that I report to this assembly that the National Council on Works recently approved apprenticeship placement of engineering undergraduates and students of technical colleges on projects at all levels of government for effective implementation of the outcome-based education in engineering. In addition, like the registrar mentioned in his opening remark, a database of undergraduate students in universities, polytechnics, and technical institutions has been developed by Koren to index all engineering students and further ensure compliance with approved carrying capacities of educational institutions for all engineering programs for enhanced competence and skill amongst engineering graduates. Permit me, Your Excellency, to recall with appreciation the current long-time program and enforcement platform, which we always refer to as the Engineering Regulations and Monitoring, ERM. The program, which was started in 1997, was aimed at ensuring capacity composite value addition to the Nigerian economy by systematic development of capacity and capabilities through deliberate utilization of Nigerian human and material resources and services in the Nigerian engineering sector. This was aimed at putting our destiny in our own hands. Most members of this assembly participated in this initiative at that time pro bono. However, the amended Korean Act has now instituted engineering regulations monitoring as an important mandate of Korean to further deepen professionalism in engineering practice. Council has therefore established the ERM department and presently working to recruit experienced practitioners to drive the schedule. In the meantime, Council has inaugurated the state's technical committees as well as the state expatriate monitoring committees as a stopgap to immediately commence the activity of the department. So far, the committees have started work in 11 states of the Federation, including a Bonnie state which was inaugurated early this year. The work is at an advanced stage to have all the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory STCs inaugurated. Let me use this opportunity to once again congratulate the members of the various state committees and wish them a successful tenure in the service of the engineering profession. Council will walk through the various STCs and SEMCs to monitor and enforce compliance of the Korean Act. As an important stakeholder, this assembly is invited to collaborate with the initiative in the interest of public safety and for the protection of the national development and economic investment. Engineering codes and standards. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there has also been a concern about the Nigeria Engineering Codes and Standards. Presently in the Nigeria Engineering Practice Arena, 
There are multiplicity of codes and standards, and this is not good for our national development. Several efforts and commitments have been thrown at developing the Nigerian engineering codes and standards. And except from drafts and paper, records available in current shelves and library, nothing tangible can be said to have been achieved. The council only recently approved and inaugurated a standing committee on engineering codes and standards. Among other functions, the committee is to formulate guidelines and procedures for preparation, review, adoption of codes and standards for engineering practice fields and with a view to achieving global best practice in engineering. This information is very important to this assembly as it is meant to request all practitioners to actively support the committee and ensure that at the next current assembly, a set of Nigerian engineering codes and standards will be launched. Since these codes and standards are the technical guidelines for promoting safety, reliability, productivity, and efficiency in engineering work, Korean shall continue to encourage the relevant and competent institutions, organizations, and associations to make the development of codes and standards the foundation of their professional work. We're already working in synergy with the Nigerian Society of Engineers Committee on Codes and Standards. Realizing the critical requirements of the assignment, the committee has started working with the NSCF, I've mentioned that, and coded for possible review of the records and documents found in the registry. Operational manuals to deepen engineering practice. Let me state that within the last 24 months, council has set up various committees and they had developed various operational manuals to deepen engineering practice. Among them are engineering regulations and monitoring operational guidelines, the ERM reporting template, the guidelines for registration of engineering practitioners, outcome-based engineering education accreditation manual, manual of continuing professional development, CPD for engineering practitioners in Nigeria, and so on. All these are available at this assembly for purchase at a very giveaway prize. Your Excellencies, distinguished invitees, members of the engineering family, ladies and gentlemen, this annual event offers a unique platform to deliberate on other issues affecting us, reflect on the state of engineering and provide vibrant solutions. This will help in repositioning engineering practice in Nigeria, maximize the immense potentials that exist for and in the profession as an integral component in the search for sustainable socioeconomic and infrastructural development of our country. I therefore urge all participants to take active parts in all deliberations. In concluding this speech, I will conclude on a very sober note. In this world, there is a time to come and there is also a time to leave. Since the last assembly, council has received the news of the demise of our colleagues, engineering practitioners from across the country. To mention just a few, May 11th last year, the engineering family was hit by the sudden death of one of the greatest engineers Nigeria has produced, engineer Ibrahim Khalil Inoa. Some weeks back, His Excellency Governor, Fidel, uh, Governor Dave Umahi lost two of his very able commissioners almost in quick succession. Engineer Fidelis Nweze, a very distinguished engineer who was the commissioner for infrastructural development for concessioning, died on the 22nd of June 2021 from injuries he sustained uh, as a result of 
an automobile accident he had on Enugu Abakeliki Road. Some weeks before then, the Commissioner for Lands and Housing, a very distinguished female engineer, Engineer Uche Oka, who conducted us round the massive hospital complex His Excellency is putting up in Abonji State when we went there in January, also passed on. Only yesterday, we received the sad news of the death of one of our colleagues, engineer Dr. Babasheo, who was here to do his registration for this assembly, collected his materials, and set out to rush to Jigawa State to attend to an, another important uh, you know, call, and come back to be at this opening ceremony. But unfortunately, he had an accident on the road, Abuja Kano Road, and died. On behalf of council, I'd like to ask that we rise for one minute and pray for the repose of the souls of this and others. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We can actually do better than that. Before we go to the next item in our program, let me quickly acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Minister, or the Federal Capital Territory, Thank you very much. Let me quickly acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory. He's represented by his Chief of Staff, Mohamed Bashe Mai Bonu. Please, can we put our hands together for him? The Honorable Minister is our host. Let me also acknowledge the presence of Professor Eli Jerem Bala. He's the Director General Energy Commission of Nigeria. He's representing the Honorable Minister of science and technology. Please, can we appreciate him? Let me also inform us that the President of the Nigerian Senate, distinguished Senator Ahmed Ibrahim Lawan, C-O-N-P-H-G, is represented by the former Minister of the Federal Capital Territory and former Governor of KB State, a very distinguished engineer, Adamu Alirio. Senator Adamu Alirio, you're welcome, sir. Okay. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we cannot talk about advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism in national development without making mention to the great strides being taken in the very state 
which has set the standards for advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners in Nigeria. That is Ebony State, the salt of the nation. Before now, Ebony State was only synonymous with rice production and cement production. But today, in every conceivable parameter, Ebony State, despite the limited resources from the Federation account, has risen to one of the best states in Nigeria in terms of quality infrastructural delivery and leadership excellence. Some of the landmark projects in Ebony State today include Ebony International Olympic Stadium under construction, Ebony International Airport with the biggest terminal building in Nigeria, Ebony Teaching Hospital, one of the biggest in Nigeria, Ebony Shopping Mall, the biggest, not just in Nigeria, in Africa. 109 contracts were awarded under his administration in his first term, and all of them completed. Rigid pavement roads across 14 local governments of Ebony State, over 15 flyovers, industries, schools, and many other projects, all constructed and being con constructed by Nigerians. In Ebony State, the philosophy is that it's only Nigerians that can develop Nigeria. These achievements, we are possible because the man behind the mask is a right peg in the right hole. No one can question his incomparable achievements and legacies of public service. He is ready to provide exactly the right kind of leadership at exactly the moment when it is most desperately needed. He holds a Bachelor of Engineering degree in Civil Engineering from the Anambra State University of Technology, now Enugu State University of Science and Technology, of course, my alma mater. His engineering practice cuts across different engineering firms between 1988 and 2011, where he cut his niche in the profession. He served as the acting state chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Ebony State, from 2011 to 2009, and was elected substantive chairman in 2010, a position he held till 2011, before his election as deputy governor of Ebony State. He served as Deputy Governor of Ebony State from 2011 to 2015. He was elected as the Governor of Ebony State in 2015 and was also re-elected for a second term in 2019. He is a Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and has backed numerous honors for his outstanding commitment and leadership excellence to our nation's building. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, join me as I welcome on stage for his opening remarks, the chairman of the opening ceremony of the 29th Engineering Assembly of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, His Excellency, Engineer David Mweze Umayi, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and Governor of Ebony State. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Senate, here represented by my very dear brother, former Governor of Kevin State, former Minister of City, and distinguished Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Adamo Aliero who is the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Works and Housing. Your Excellency, you're welcome, sir. Our Chief Host, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, 
His Excellency Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, here represented by my colleague. Thank you, we're Deputy Governor together. And now, Minister of Works and Housing. Your Excellency, you're welcome. And our dear host, the Minister of FCT. I'm told he's represented by his Chief of Staff. And our dear President of Council, our highly revered engineer Ali Rabiu, the Registrar of Council, all the past presidents, very senior, senior engineers, all the team members of the President of Council, Your Majesty, and Your Highnesses that are here, and the my entourage, Senators, House of Reps members, and very high stakeholders of my state, Ebony State, and all the participants, my dear brothers and sisters. Let me first commend the President of Council and your team for putting this 29th Engineering Assembly together. I was very shocked when I came in to find out that this assembly could be this big, this organized, and they were attended. I feel sorry. I feel sorry for myself that this is my first time I'm attending this program. And this is this is so sad what I have lost in the past. But I'm confident that I will catch up. Mr. President, let me first thank our dear President, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a very good man. You may not know unless you get closer to him. For the executive orders he has assented to for the regulation and practice of engineering in Nigeria. And that executive order. I will draw a lot of my remarks from that because that's very inspirational and I think that there is a lot to draw from that. Mr. President, when I looked at majorly the mission statement, and I will read just one of it, which is said to foster speedy acquisition of relevant engineering and technological skills through continuous professional development. Mr. President, this is very important. We need this assembly to change our country. We need this assembly to rewrite our history. One of the few things I've discovered among our colleagues is lack of patriotism. Not everybody. I've always told people that there are two things to chase. If you chase money and you chase the perfection, you will miss the perfection. But if you chase the perfection and its ethics, you will get the perfection and you also get the money. Today we lament there are no jobs, there are no jobs, uh, government create jobs and so on and so forth. But the truth remains that if you have an excellent spirit and you have an excellent performance, there are a lot of jobs waiting for you. And this is the truth. So we young engineers in this assembly, we need to cultivate 
the attitude of discipline. Discipline is very important. I graduated in 1987 and did my youth service in the uh, uh, Italian company, Saipem. And uh, during that time, we were going to work 29 days in a week. Six o'clock would rise. And my commitment was such that I was given a section, cathodic protection section. And that I was the only black man heading a section among the Italian company in the Lagos Edwin Gas Pipeline Project. I had a very good training at Asutec then. And I had to deploy it. The question is, do we still have such discipline in our universities today? Do we still have such discipline? Do we still have such commitment? When I finished, I joined a company, Israeli company, a major in water project that's still here today, but with a different name. And that was SCC Nigeria Limited. And my salary then in 1988 to 89 was 650 naira. And when they paid me the first salary, I said, what do I do with all this money? It was simply too much for me. But I had to start saving. And from there, I went to head the India Group Flood Control Measures at Abia State. Of course, Abba in Abia State. I was there until I was called to face a challenge of the Akwaibom, the dome, the cultural center of Akwaibom. If you are from Akwaibom, I was the young engineer in 1990 and I built that Akwaibom cultural hall. It's still a very, very challenging project. What am I talking about? Discipline, patience, patriotism. This is very important. Mr. President, our profession is very key to the development of any nation. A very successful, worthy man in China was asked the secret of your success, and he said it's a feedback mechanism. Another man was asked, what is the secret behind the success of China? He said, if you want to succeed as a nation, you have to build roads. Mr. President, you have to take a stock of what we have and the product of our universities. The simple thing I ask young engineers when they appear before me for interviews, what is the mixed ratio of grade 40 concrete? of grade 20 concrete, of grade 25 concrete. I've only recorded 10% success for those that even have 10 years experience in the field. Mr. President, I'm here to present a solution and I take an evaluation of what the lawyers are doing. I'm not here to compare the two professions, but side by side, which of the professions is needed in nation building first? And is the engineer. And the engineer is the only person that we go down with his works if something goes wrong. Mr. President, the young ones we are bringing up today are the people that will design our roads tomorrow. They are the people that will build our hospitals and so on and so forth. And so if the nation Nigeria wants our evening to be very peaceful and glorious, we have to take a quick evaluation of what we have to do to reinvent the practical impartation of knowledge, practical knowledge in our young engineers. And I look at what the lawyers are doing. They have one year law school. When I was doing my uh, industrial training, I confronted a man who was HOD in Delta State, and I said, sir, I want to learn how to you know, treat an you know, infinite element in structural you know, analysis. He said he was not asked to teach me. And so I came out of the university without real practical experience. I learned on the job. 
How did we start a flyover revolution in Ebony State? We never built anyone. I never experienced in practical terms the building of flyover. But we had to give out one flyover to a Chinese company. The memories of Engineer Wesley Lipson. And so he was the one supervising it. And I put a number of engineers from various ministries together to understudy the Chinese company. And they did. And after the first flyover which was contracted out, the rest of the 14 flyovers have been built by Ebony State engineers. And there are twin flyovers, each and every one of them, twin flyovers. And a length of between 350 and 500 meter length. I sat down with the late engineer ways, and I said that Bonny State has been neglected. Sometimes they say there are 36 states, and they name all the states and say there's one missing, and they will call it Bonny. I said, no, we have to rewrite the history. And we sat down to say, what do we do? So we decided to design a very complex flyover that has about six outlets and, a, and a, a fountain at the middle of the flyover. And we did that. And the aim of that flyover is when people get to that flyover, they must ask questions. In asking questions, you will put a bunch of states in recognition. Mr. President, I'm telling you that it is possible for Nigerians to develop Nigeria. It is very possible. It's very possible. And Ebony State offers that challenge. I was told one time that the issue of concrete rule was debated at the Federal Executive Council. When I was a contractor as party chairman, I had constant failure of the asphalt in one of our roads. And I sat down and said, how do I solve this problem? And I went to cement technology, and I had to open the, the, the concrete and concreted it, and then put asphalt over lay, and the water seepage stopped. And when I started as a governor, I decided, as a contractor, I have about three asphalt plants in Ebony State. I could as well be selling asphalt. But 99% of our projects are concrete road-based out of patriotism. <laughs> Mr. President, we have to retrain our engineers and we have to do something that looks like what the lawyers are doing. We have to have compulsory one-year training program after graduation. <laughs> we should do that. And that is the basis of acquiring you know, the, the, the qualification to answer engineer. There are some of us that answer engineer that should not by every standard. This is very important. And I offer you the first shot, sir. I offer to give you a structure that can host about 3,000 people at a go, totally and fully built in Ebony State. You can start with that. Our engineers will love it. We get our young people, you know, in this kind of arena. We provide people that are practical experiences. We provide expatriates. They come there to teach for six months, and then six months must be compulsorily attached to projects. This is very important. I want us to radicalize engineering practice in Nigeria. I want us to take over our nation. When you go to sites, you see that there are black people that are doing the job with one man that is moving up and down. And we tend to obey that man. But it's a black skin. We tend to disobey the person. What is wrong with our skin? Mr. President, I can make people angry, but the truth remains that the cost of project in Nigeria is the highest all over the world. Why should it be? Why should we be? 
And this is the real reason why projects are being valued. I did something when I came on board. When I was deputy governor, I could sit there. And I saw commissioners reviewing projects for more than even 50% of cost without recourse to the sitting governor. So I had to enact a law that any project signed cannot be reviewed by an inch without the consent of a sitting governor. And that has helped us as a state to put the cost of our projects in checks. And that has helped us to achieve a lot. Mr. President, I also had to train and engage our young engineers. 90% of our projects in my second tenure are done by Ebonians, by engineers, under direct labor cost. You know, sometimes people ask, what is the magic of Ebony State? Some people say, Mr. President gives me additional fund because uh, it's my father. Uh, some say we print money and all kinds of stuff. But the truth remains is that it's the engineering experience, it's patriotism and fear of God. A combination of all this has endured the glory that we see in our state. And so I would like us to engage, Mr. President. We have a lot to offer this nation. I'd like us to say no to the cost of projects in this country. I'd like us to say no to the treatment meted to our engineers in various construction companies that are expatriate based. I like the payments that are being done to expatriates, some of them not even engineers, heading us, should be reviewed in favor of our people too. <laughs> Mr. President, I want to offer myself for service to atone for my past sins of not attending this assembly. <laughs> and I'll be ready to take up any assignment towards radicalization of engineering practice in this country. <laughs> the our airport is going to be one of the biggest and is going to be the first airport runway to be fully built with concrete. I asked somebody, why is it that we are not using concrete in building our terminals? They say the cost is high. I've been able to compare the cost of asphalt works and concrete works. And I discovered that concrete works is cheaper. But I decided that I have little money and I needed to keep quiet till I have fully built a boy instead before I will reveal the secret. Because should I had if I had reviewed the secret, those with big money would have taken the expatriate that were teaching us. Now it's time to engage, it's time to review. Ladies and gentlemen, the use of concrete is cheaper than the use of Auschwitz. And if anybody wants to throw up a challenge, the person can come to Bonny State and I can give you the analysis of the use of Auschwitz from the first principle and give you the analysis of the use of concrete. As of today, we are constructing 199 kilometers of ring road, which we call Bakaliki Ring Road. The first section is awarded. And the, it took me one year to battle with the finance you know, banks because they insisted we must use asphalt. I said no, because of our substructure, you know, the type of substructure we have, which is predominantly clear soil, and that by the time we will be repaying this loan, it will be unto my grandchildren. And we say, your father ate the money. I say, no, I want to leave peace for my children and grandchildren. And I insisted and battled that we more use concrete to do that. And I provided from the first principle the comparative analysis of boots, you know, uh, rigid and, uh, you know, flexible pavements. And at the end of the day, I had to sign on a taking that should the cost increase, I would pay. But surprisingly, the cost is going to be very much on the saving side. And I will be inviting you in one of the uh, programs which will be hosted in Ebony State to come and commission that project because it will be completed before I leave office. <laughs> Finally, Your Excellencies and Mr. President, I want to welcome you for 
uh, to a, a Bonny State for the AGM uh, this year. I'm told that it's going to happen in Southeast. I'm told some people are saying there's uh, uh, insecurity, insecurity in Southeast on the pages of newspapers. But the truth remains that we are safe and we are committed to hosting you. And since I have the privilege of uh, chairing this assembly, I will be requesting as a matter of privilege that I host that AGM in Ibony State. I want to thank you so much. And uh, I can assure you that even committee meetings, I won't miss it again. Uh, I will excuse myself uh, along the line, because I thought it was yesterday, uh, so I had to book a flight you know, about now, but you know, I had to uh, make sure I attend and to plead for forgiveness for the years of uh, being absent and uh, to also uh, offer to atone for those years. And so I want to thank you, all the participants, uh, young engineers, uh, seniors, uh, thank you for the great work you're doing. Every way you got involved in the building of this nation, you've always been there and you've, you know, proved yourself, you know, uh, you know, very committed. And so, Mr. President, I will join you in the theme that I say, radicalization of our engineering practice and to take our nation, Nigeria, building, you know, in our hands. Thank you and God bless you. a better round of applause as we take our seats, please. Thank you very much, sir. Very quickly, I would like to recognize the delegation of the Airborne State Governor, Senator Ucha, Senator Agbo, Honorable Chinedu Oga, Honorable Chapa Mweze, Chief Elias Mba, Edward Nkwegu, Royal Prince C. Ekwe, Engineer Wambam Lastborn, Prince Enyi Upo, Patrick Ojim, Honorable Peter Ede, Honorable Kelechi Chima, Lady Anne Ag Eze, Honorable Agu Nachi, Honorable Jonathan Eze, and lastly, Peter Wakba. Can we give them a round of applause, please? You're all very warmly welcome. I'd like to also recognize with us here this morning the representative of the executive governor of Plato State, 
a past council member of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Engineer Sunday Hayat, FNSC, MNI, the head of service, Play Two States. Can we give him a round of applause, please? I would like to also acknowledge the presence of the Director of Safety, Electronics and Engineering Services, Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, Engineer Farouk Ahmed Umar, FNSC. Can we give him a round of applause, please? Thank you. Time now to listen to the keynote address on the theme for the 29th Engineering Assembly, which is advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. Speaking to us for the next 20 minutes is a very distinguished engineer, engineer Inua K. Musa, a member of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, MFR, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, member of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, MNI. He is a Nigerian-born civil engineer and a retired public officer with extensive engineering experience and management skills. Over the past nearly half a century, he has worked in a variety of professional capacities in both the public and private sectors. That includes being pioneer, of, being pioneer chief executive officer of the National Integrated Water Resources Management Commission from 2007 to 2009. The federal director of irrigation and drainage from 1993 to 2007. Managing Director of now defunct Niger River Basin Development Authority from 1990 to 1993, among several others. Inua earned his B.Eng. from Amadou Bello University in Zaria and his M.Eng. in 1977 from University of Sheffield in United Kingdom. He is currently the chairman of board of directors of Niger State Water and Sewage Corporation, member of the Ministerial Policy Advisory Committee, Federal Ministry of Water Resources. A trustee of Global Water Partnership, Nigeria, a trustee of Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida University, IBBU Foundation. Furthermore, Inwa is a member of MENA Emirate Council with the traditional title of Majid Dadi MENA. He is the chairman board of directors of Princess Azara Lodge Limited and patron of several charity foundations for orphans and widows. He is a resource person on institutional development, strategic management, and integrated water resources management for many national and international consultancy firms, as well as multilateral organizations. He was at various times vice president between 2002 and 2005, and chairman of, Perm of permanent committee on organizational affairs and strategy from 2003 to 2006 of International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage. He received EE Alexevi Memorial Award from ICID in special recognition for eminent leadership and the enduring contributions to the worldwide advancements of science of irrigation and drainage in 2006. Inua was also a member of the governing council of Yaba College of Technology from 1986 to 1990. Member of the Governing Council of IBBU Lapai from 2011 to 2019. Inua has attended national and international conferences, seminars, expert consultation forums, and workshops at home and in over 40 countries. He has presented keynote addresses and lead papers at several of these gatherings and has published many articles 
and papers on subjects ranging from engineering management and public policy in several reputable international journals. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let's together welcome engineer Inua K. Musa, FNSC, FNICE, MNI, Majin Dadi Mina. Can we give him a better applause, please? A better applause, please, as welcoming up to the fore. Can we keep clapping until he comes forward? Keep clapping, please. Thank you. I would like to stand on the existing protocols because the day is far gone. And um, so, distinguished chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank Corin, the organizers of this 29th annual assembly for inviting me to speak to you and lead the discussion on the central themes of this year's assembly, advancing frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. This year's annual engineering assembly is a clarion call for us all to ponder and chart the path for a professional career success. The greatest task of all patriotic professionals is to lend a helping hand in building effective partnership to navigate and free leapfrog our national development. So my keynote address today therefore rest on your answer to a very fundamental question. Are you a professional? Being a professional is not about engineering degrees or diploma or even current certificate. It does, that won't make you a professional. Your job title, your wealth will not make you a professional. To be a professional, you need, you don't need any specialized certification or job title or wealth. What you need most is constant desire to add value to others and to the society as a whole without compromising your own values. What I mean here is that a lot of the time young are so concerned about getting money today that they compromise their value and they don't add value. Until we get over that, that that's only when we begin to move forward. What will happen, therefore, if professional career success was common and everyone could achieve it without exertion as some of our young men are trying to do today, the consequence will be too grave for this nation. Career success will become insipid, and hard work will no longer be required. And I'm afraid that will lead us to nowhere. So as professionals in engineering, especially in a rapidly changing environment, we need to aspire for career success first. So to do that, we have to keep pace with advances in the frontier of engineering practices, knowledge and skills, as well as entrench professionalism to contribute to national development. So my presentation today, 
and my keynote address will try to look at how do we build a citizen-based national development? How can we get the desired human capital development to propel the nation to advance digital economy? And how do we entrench professionalism to reorient the core values and work ethics of inter integrity, hard work, trustworthiness, honesty, and strong community and family values. The pride of every citizen is the attainment of the high value level of national development and improved conditions of human existence in all ramifications. This will facilitate the citizens to drive natural attachment to governance. National development is therefore essentially about the nation's ability to mitigate challenges and enhance opportunity to sustainably improve the lives of citizens in all ramifications. Now, the challenges of post-COVID are enormous. Today, it is projected that our macroeconomic environment will remain tough over the next few years. With high inflation, devalued Nigerian Naira, long-term rate of inflation, which is estimated to be, it will be in double digit. Real interest rate will remain negative. And then there is also a negative growth in which our population growth seems to be going faster than our output. And we have over 21 million unemployed with no social safety net. Therefore, a lot of Nigerians are getting poorer and their purchasing powers are falling. These and other governance challenges have deepened human insecurity. Here, when I mean human insecurity, I mean poverty, rural, depleting rural livelihood, which in turn has led to natural insecurity that are complex with multiple and overlap, overlapping threats. Unfortunately, these are the harsh realities in which the national development has to be built. But there are opportunities, a lot of opportunities. And I think my paper will address more of the opportunities. The digital technology frontiers has arrived. It offers huge window of opportunities to, ha to be harnessed by the nation, especially if we are primed, if we can prime ourselves to master the game of globalization. Thankfully, we have one of our own today in the World Trade Organization. But we need to address the global digital divide and the international aspect of innovation system. We must also, also develop a comprehensive homegrown citizen-based national transformation agenda that will strengthen the protection and empowerment of all Nigerians that fit all our peculiar circumstances. Only then can we leapfrog the nation by transforming our economy to catch up with the advanced nations, because they won't wait for us. Now, Adam Smith's postulation, which talks only about land, labor, and capital, is being challenged. Today, what is believed to matter most is raw material, because increasingly, raw materials will become protected and nationalized. 
with areas of infrastructure, information. Once you have that, then people become central because people matter. But you only need people with skills, technology, and data. And these can be acquired and they can be learned or transferred. We also are lucky as a nation to have a large population so we have the market and we can provide the consumers. So we need to address our knowledge, our skills, and the information to support that manpower. But before then, in the current situation of insecurity, you need the assurance of good governance, appropriate physical and digital infrastructure, enabling environment for research and innovation. And if I must add, very importantly, we need a revolutionary reward and compensation system. And then we need adequate, articulate action plan. But first, we need to overcome the challenges. And one of the challenges is the culture of public policy failure, which unfortunately pass national development plans, programs, and projects lacked because there, was, there is hardly normally widespread citizen buy-in and were rarely implemented as planned. To facilitate citizen buy-in, we must ensure that policy choices are feasible, that they will sustainably produce the intended effect and positive impact in relation to targeted population. And the government will provide monitoring and evaluation strategy that will ensure the intended objectives and outcomes are achieved. Now, in the key challenges is the state of our educational system. The Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics of Usman Danfordio University, Sokoto, was lamenting recently over the mass failure in the recently conclu concluded jam. He noted, there can be quality education in a badly organized society where university graduate, graduates of tertiary education are not employable and who resource to crime due to poor education. If we want to be honest about this country, we must be honest about its education, end of quote. Now, unfortunately, this has to, because all you need to do is go to some of our universities and see their laboratories of the polytechnics and the universities. They are 19th century cent relics with many faculty and students that are not computer literate. I'm surprised to find, you'll find a lot of professors who still transcribe with handwritten transcription. They can't even master the word processor. Added to this also is the cheating and examination malpractices. You have a graduate who can't even write it, an application. So how can he report on what he's doing? A lecturer in a South African university 
brought an expressive message on cheating in the education system that resonate with the state of our education system in Nigeria today. And I quote, collapsing any nation does not require the use of atomic bomb or the use of long range missile. All it requires is lowering the quality of education and allowing cheating in exams by the students. The patient dies in the hands of the doctor who passed his exam through cheating. The building collapses in the hands of an engineer who passed his exams through cheating. And the money is lost in the hands of an accountant who passes his exams through cheating. And humanity dies in the hand of a religious scholar who passes his exams through cheating. And justice is lost in the hand of a judge who passes exams through cheating. And ignorance is rampant in the minds of children who are under the cares of teachers who pass exams through cheating. The collapse of education is the collapse of the nation. I would like to add the following to the above. Substandard works are done by technologists who pass exams through cheating. Shoddy work will be executed by the craftsmen who pass threat certificates through cheating. Fake news or unverified information will be given by journalists who pass exams through cheating. Unjustifiable and patriotic actions will be supported by citizens who pass exams through cheating. Uninspiring services will be given by professionals who pass exams through cheating. Indeed, the collapse of education is the collapse of all professions as it is of the nation. Therefore, Koren has, his, has a lot to do in helping us look into this unfortunate situation. Now, let's come back again to the question, who is a professional? Of all the definitions I found, nothing clearly defines professional like a narrative that was given by one management guru and a renowned author, Shivkera, who reported about his experience in Singapore. He said, and I quote, six years ago in Singapore, I gave a taxi driver a business card to take me to a particular address. At the last point, he cycled around the building his meter read $11, but he took only $10. I said, Henry, your meter is $11. How come you are taking only 10? He replied, sir, I'm a taxi driver. I'm supposed to be bringing you straight to the destination. Since I did not know the last spot, I had to cycle around the building. Had I brought you straight here, the meter will have ten dollars why should you be paying for my ignorance he said sir <laughs> legally i can claim eleven dollars but honestly and ethically i am entitled to only ten dollars he further added singapore is a tourist destination and many people come here for three or four days after clearing the immigration and custom, the first experience is always with the taxi driver. And if that is not good, the balance of their three or four days would not be pleasant either. He says, sir, though I'm a taxi driver, I'm the ambassador of Singapore without a diplomatic passport. <laughs> now, to me, that is a professional. He may not even have a degree he may not even have gone to school, but he understands his contribution to the nation. And he knew what he needed to do to advance the development of his country. This gentleman will go away happy. And of course, if you talk about Singapore, he will be willing to encourage you to go there because he has met a taxi driver who has displayed professionalism. So a true professional has to have human touch and good values. 
He possesses sound knowledge, skills, and competence and experience for his job, as well as embodies excellence in moral ethic and work culture. Professionalism is how we practice and conduct ourselves in a profession. As the saying goes, professionalism is not the job you do, it is how you do the job. It often tops the list of absolute essential by employers, but it's still far from universal. Like every skill, it requires sustained practice to perfect it. Socioeconomic and political challenges have deepened corruption, and this has affected uh, their profession, all the professions and professionalism, and has led to many other unethical conduct that are compromising our national development. Recently, a colleague of mine told me a story that he went visiting his old office and the young engineers he left behind were excited to receive him. But he was surprised when they told him, sir, we learned so much from you when you were here, but we didn't make money. Now, things are better. So he asked, what makes it better? The fact that you think you are making money and you are not learning anymore? Or the fact that you learned from me and now you are able to practice and therefore you are earning more? Now, unfortunately, these are some of the things that are reoccurring over and over again. So, what are the new perspectives that we should now encourage in cap human capital development so as to nurture sound engineering professionals? We m must make engineer a lifelong learner because many jobs today and many more in the near future will require this. We have to continuously be learning and I'm happy the CPD is trying to look into this aspect. The foundation education must be right quantitatively and qualitatively and I'm happy to hear the president talk about what they are doing about Tibet and, uh, and uh, outcome-based engineering education. But we need also to look into them, make young professionals to not only be work ready, but making them human, who consider the impact of their activity on the environment and fellow citizens. And I'm also happy because OBEE is supposed to shift our educational curriculum from knowledge acquisition to building global competencies and the move to a greater degree of collaborative activity within and between various institutions and sectors. Now, sometimes people will ask if the system is not broken, why change it? Well, the truth is the system is broken and we need to change it. But also in changing it, we need to change with clear perspective of the situation in the, the world today or the environment in which engineers have to practice. Today, because of the digital economy, there is this trend towards personalizing learning. And then, of course, the nature of work today means there is a need for a broader perspective than 
some of us had to grapple with when we were starting as young engineers. The technological change also is very rapid, paving way for new jobs, increased productivity, and for delivering effective public services. I remember when we started as civil engineers, and you have to do design for a bridge. It takes months of rigorous calculations. Your senior will check it. Somebody will check it before you finally. And, uh, but today, with computer-aided design, it is done within a day. And uh, even the drawings produce also. Uh, on the other hand, we need to explore the new frontiers of practice to advance the national development. To this end, I'm recommending that Korean, in collaboration with Nigerian Society of Engineers and others, CBN, National uh, Productivity Commission, and National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies should convene a five-day retreat biannually that will bring together a select group of around 50 to 100 outstanding engineering practitioners, researchers, technologists, and development leaders from industry and academia to interact, network, and diffuse knowledge, technology, and practices among the incoming and outgoing generation of engineering leaders and beyond especially on pioneering technical works to identify issues and discuss solutions to national challenge and to examine cutting-edge knowledge, research, technology, and practices for national development. I also believe that Korean should sustain the drive to ensure quality human capital development that embraces all dimensions such as mentoring. Today, you see our younger engineers not having any respect or regard for their elderly engineers and are not willing to tap on their knowledge. We need to encourage employers to link professional development to the organizational strategic intent. An association and learning from each other and be bound by the spirit of self-expression. I want to commend the Presidential Executive Order Number 5 of 2018. It's a significant milestone, but more need to be done to actualize it. We need more involvement of engineers in our national politics. I was pleasantly uh, surprised and encouraged by the chairman of this occasion when he narrated the significant achievement he's doing in his state. Now, China, the new emerging global superpower, has at the top of their political structure 15 high policy makers, out of which nine are engineers. So you can see we have a lot of room to get involved. I hope we'll have more, in future we'll have more governors, deputy governors among us. In conclusion, all aspects of national development have a role for engineering profession. We are primers for transformation. National development issues that require engineering technology solution will not be solved by theology or politics. Advancing engineering professional practice and entrenching professionalism in national development require good human capital development with appropriate reward and compensation system as foundation. Consistent doing what is right, the right way, at the right time, which I think is professionalism and to remember that career accomplishment that support national development is a journey and not a destination. We will make mistakes and even fail, 
but let us together motivate ourselves and not use it to serve as excuse to abandon our primary goal of national development. Be humble and learn from the mistake of others. To know that we cannot become what we want by remaining where we are. And to take the bold step to make sure that in our building, textile and food production, we are independent and self-sufficient. We cannot continue to have China produce our textile, foreign farms come to build even our buildings. It's not done. And our food production must be driven by Nigerians. Remember, professionalism is what makes us human at work. Professional success is adding value to society with compromising our values. We must therefore accept the challenge to step up, be creative and critical, curious and capable to advance the frontier of engineering practitioners and entrench professionalism for national development. After all, nothing compares to the satisfaction of contributing something to add value to the lives of Nigerians. The purpose of life is to contribute in some way to make things better. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Can we give him another round of applause, please? I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the presence of Honorable Mohamed Bello Adoke, SAN, CFR, former Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice. Can we give him a round of applause, please? We also have present in our midst Engineer Nuruddin Rafin Dadi, FNSC, Fellow Academy of Engineering, MD of FEMA. Can we give him a round of applause as well? We also have present with us this morning, engineer Abdullahi Kasim, the executive director of Niger Delta Power Holding Company. Can we appreciate him? Onward now, we'll be taking a few goodwill messages as I respectfully welcome up to the stage for his goodwill message, His Royal Highness, the Andoma of Doma in Nasarawa State, Al Haji. Dr. Amadu Adi Oga Onawo O-O-N. Can we give him a resounding applause as he comes to the fore? We can do it better, please. Chairman of this engineering assembly, 29 engineering assembly, Governor of the Wahine State. Former Governor and Senator representing the Senate President, Governor Senator Alero. The President of Koren. She got a life here. And here I view the representative of the chief host, an engineer by all rights, the Minister of State works. If I proceed, I'm sure I will be guilty of misapplication of protocol. Let me stand by the protocol established, please. Distinguished Nigerian engineers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to be here a second time. The first time in my individual capacity, when I was invited, when the president of Corinth started to head this association. 
And today, in my own capacity and in the capacity of a representative of the chairman of the National State Council of Chiefs, Demi of Lapia, Justice C. Divage, Muhammad retired. It's always difficult addressing an array of worthies like you, full of knowledge, expertise, professional accomplishments, strides. And when we stand before you, we feel completely humbled and disarmed, almost in want of what to say. But having been assigned the responsibility to say a word of goodwill, I'm summoning the courage to muster a thing or two to say. But first of all, to say that the chairman of my Council of Chiefs in Nasarawa State, Justice C. Bagi Muhammad Retired, Emir of Lafia, regrets his inability to be here with you today. Among competing national responsibilities, he is unavoidably absent. I'm trying to attempt to represent him. And I hope I will say a thing that makes sense in his regards and in my own regard, all as invited guests to this gathering. All the books of religion taught us one thing, that God Almighty ordained the world. And God, in his will, packaged the world with a lot of beautiful things. God ordained all the beautiful things you are seeing in this world today. And God ordained the beginning and the end of the world after all accomplishments. And God, in all of this beautiful package, left it enclosed. But because God wanted us to benefit from it, God invented knowledge. And the knowledge that has brought the world into all of its beauty is the knowledge of engineering. There, will have, there wouldn't have been this microphone and the speaker conveying the message and our wordings if engineering had not worked. This hall wouldn't have been there. All the beautiful facilities that provided mo mobility for us to be here wouldn't have been there. Our luck is in all of these beautiful things that God has ordained for the world that engineering has manifested. Nigerian engineers are not missing in the stride to contribute to these beautiful things we are seeing and benefiting from. Please, can you clap for Nigerian engineers? So if we are so successfully accomplishing as engineers, and we have gone beyond the sands of Nigeria to establish the authority of Nigerian knowledge and in engineering, and the world is moving far ahead of Nigeria, in deploying engineering to improve our values and human development. I'm sure Nigerian engineers know that we have been recording strides in other parts of the world. I'm told the fastest computer in the world is created by Nigeria. I'm also told that a young man from Katina was able to invent a device that you can analyze an eye problem within the shortest possible time. I'm also aware that most of the best medical doctors, whether in Europe or in the Americas, are Nigerians. I'm also aware that among the excellence you have in the world in the engineering services, most of you here are part of the package. Why is Nigeria not establishing its place by first building from our land our excellence so that we'll be deployed to other countries like the Chinese and other expatriates are coming to Nigeria to take over what you should have been doing for us. I told you the capacities and excellence in knowledge that the world is exploiting from. You people can move Nigeria far ahead of those nations that are exploiting our excellence by deploying what the former governor, what the governor of Ebony State, the chairman of this ceremony, said he's attempting to do in Ebony. Selflessness, sense of love for your country, and some measure of sacrifice 
of your personal interest, that the people's interest will be above your own. If we do, because we already have the knowledge, because the key to every accomplishment is knowledge, since we already have it, Nigeria already has it. Well, I've been having aeroplanes made in Nigeria by now, unfortunately. You have not been angry enough as the engineers from Nigeria to give us even a helicopter made in Nigeria. Are Nigeria engineers ready to give us a helicopter made in Nigeria? Can you give us a Boeing plane made in Nigeria? What about these cars we are buying with exotic and enormous amount of money? Beautiful Jeeps, beautiful Porsche cars. We have a Nigerian who designed a car for General Motors. They call him Jelani. If we have him and all the others like you, can you give us beautiful cars in Nigeria? So what are we waiting for? This hall we are living in, we are holding this conference in, is not built by a Nigerian. And Nigerian engineers are seated in this hall today. And you all know that you can do better than what we, ha what, what we, are, what we are benefiting from now. You can design better halls than this. And Nigeria will be the better for it. Instead of the money going to a foreign company, it remains with you. The better for us, isn't it? I'm sure if we are resolved, we can make Nigeria a better place. Because the world is coming here to pack all of you to use your expertise and knowledge to develop their own country, including our national resources. And we are not deploying it selflessly for the development of our nation and our own people. I'm sure Nigerian engineers from this conference will develop a capacity to begin to invent what the world is inventing that all of us are running to. Nigeria is one of the most endowed countries in this world. We don't go to any nation to seek mineral wealth to come and develop our nation. No country has what we have. And that is why they all rush here to take what we have. If we have the human and material resources, with all the grandeur of the expertise each of you is gifted with, please, Nigeria engineers, make your fatherland proud of the Nigerian engineers that the world is exploiting. When the, home, when the governor of Obonyo was talking, on the strides and accomplishment because of selflessness and sense of patriotism to move his state forward. When somebody, when the MC was saying he, 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 he constructed and completed over a, almost 200 projects within his first tenure, started and completed, not halfway. I became tempted to ask whether there's a relationship between Ebony and Borno State, where Zulum is giving us surprises. I became tempted to see if there's a relationship between rivers and Sao Olu in Lagos, because all of these ones are accomplishing things. The governor of Kaduna is packing every street and packing everybody's house and establishing a presence. The only thing that is common about them is deploying engineering to make their places better. So, if engineering is the concept that has made this world beautiful, and Nigeria engineers are among the best in this world, why is our country not among the best of nations where everybody will run to in this world? I'm sure the Nigerian engineers will find the basis that henceforth our expertise and excellence must be first be seen in Nigeria before in any part of the world where the white people that are supposed to be by our own psychic superior to us are dependent on our excellence to develop their own land. Can't us do that for ourselves? And I was wondering why up until now most of our roads were inaccessible. I now see the wisdom in Buhari's construction of roads across the nation, railway, improvement on agriculture, and all of these things are predicated and dependent on engineering. Please, as I return to my seat, 
mine is to make a humble appeal that if God has, after creation, benefited the world with knowledge to transform the world into what it is today, and that knowledge came to convert the world into this excellence only from engineering, Nigerian engineers can make Nigeria a better place and among the best in the world because God has already given us that knowledge in Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored by the privilege to stand before you just to urge that your capacities as Nigerian engineers have no limits. That is why the whole world comes to exploit from the extent of the vastness of Nigeria's intellectual excellence in engineering. Your fatherland deserves more than you're offering us now. Please make Nigeria a better place so that the world will come to us. Thank you sincerely for your time. Can we give him another round of applause, please? Our sincere appreciation to you, sir. Next up for his goodwill message. Next up for his goodwill message. Please join me in welcoming the representative of the Chief of Defense Staff, Major General G80 Ochigbano. Can we give him a round of applause as he comes to the fore? He'll do that in the next two minutes. Thank you. Before I stand on the already well-established protocol, permit me to please and humbly pay a few courtesies. The chairman, His Excellency David Nwezo Mahi, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers and governor of Ebony State, the representative of the Senate President his Excellency Senator Aliero and other members of the National Assembly here present, the Honorable Minister of the FCT and Works and Housing, our Royal Fathers here present, the President of Koren, Engineer Ali A. Rabiu. I would also humbly want to recognize the presence of a few of my Bosses, I recognize the presence here of uh, Admiral Jonah, retired. He was my boss in the Defense College, a very serious and practical engineer. He was also a deputy governor of Bielsa State. I also recognize Major General ECN OB, retired, who was the former commander of the Army Engineers. I am Major General Gabriel Ochibano. I have the rare privilege of representing the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, Nigerian Army Medal, who himself is a proud engineer from Obafemi Awolowo University. He would have very much loved to be here to attend this conference because he recognizes the exceptional role engineers play in nation building, and particularly Nigerian engineers. The president and indeed the chairman have both aptly drawn our attention to the stage set by President Muhammad Buhari for the engineering practice 
to thrive by enacting Executive Order 5. Of course, the very exceptional, I mean, experienced and innovative engineering governor of Ebony State highlighted the bane of engineering practice in Nigeria. He indeed holds the engineering touch light and definitely points the way. A lot of thanks to him for his encouragement of our local and indigenous engineers. Some of the issues that the CDS is very concerned about have aptly been captured and they have also been emphasized here, so there's no need to emphasize most of those issues again. Because he, having, uh, having listened to all the presenters who presented earlier, there is definitely no doubt that the problems and challenges bedeviling engineering practice in Nigeria are well known. What is really lacking, or what needs to be done more, are pragmatic and functional approaches. In this regard, the CDS, I'm sure, will be happy to have the current president champion a, current, a wholly current owned Tibet institution that will be practical and functional. And if the president agrees to do this, I'm sure he will find a ready helper in the governor of Ebony State who would provide and assist him to achieve that by establishing an institution that will encourage lower level capacity building, perhaps in Ebony State, for a start. Another concern the CDS wants or would like to share with this audience is the hope in seeing that the practitioners of engineering in Nigeria could put more finesse to their outputs. Another equally disturbing concern for the CDS is the poor quality of engineering materials, which he hopes the current president and indeed other stakeholders will work assiduously towards ensuring that good materials are used for construction and other engineering practices. The CDS wishes to draw the attention of the current president and indeed all other engineers here to the vast engineering human resources in the Nigerian Armed Forces and enjoins the council to tap into these vast resources. Korem must further challenge local engineers and create opportunities for its members. On this note, I wish to convey to this great body the good wishes of the CDS and his willingness to have the armed forces partner with Korem to reverse engineering deficits in Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Very quickly, we'll be taking the third goodwill message as I welcome up to the fore the representative of the Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Professor Eli Gidere Bala, and he'll be doing that in the next one minute, please. Thank you. the chairman of this occasion, the representative of the Senate president, the president of Corin, and past presidents, the Royal Highness, honorable ministers here, ladies and gentlemen, I stand here to read the goodwill message of the honorable minister of science and technology, Dr. Obonaya Onu, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers. So here it goes. I'm indeed privileged and honored to be invited uh, to the 29th Engineering Assembly organized by the Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria. The theme of the conference titled Advancing the Frontiers of Engineering Practitioners and Entrenching Professionalism for National Development is indeed apt and timely. At this moment, when Nigeria, under the leadership 
our President Muhammad al-Bukhari is looking towards, is, is looking inwards for solutions to the social and economic problems facing our nation for self-reliance. May I therefore commend and congratulate the executives of current under the leadership of Engineer Ali Rabiu, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, for their good works and bringing together engineering practitioners and stakeholders from both public and private sectors to share experiences and chat a way forward on this very important matter despite the challenging COVID-19 pandemic. May I commence by assuring the gathering that Mr. President has a strong political will to us in advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. You may recall that in 2017, the Federal Executive Council under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari approved the National Science, Technology and Innovation Roadmap 2017 to 2030 presented by my ministry. This is to use science, technology and innovation to catalyze Nigeria's economic diversification, competitiveness and growth. I'm happy to inform this 29th Assembly that Mr. President has, as, as recent as in July 2021, approved the change of name of my ministry from the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology to the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, putting round peg in round hole. This followed shortly after another approval by Mr. President, conveyed by the Vice President during the Science and Technology Innovation Expo uh, Exposition held in March 2021, that 0.5% of the GDP be set aside for national research and innovation. Innovation has the greatest impact on sustainable social development. It is the creation, it's the creation, development, and implementation of a new product, process, or service with the objective of improving efficiency, effectiveness, or competitive advantage. The horizon and frontiers of indigenous engineering practitioners got broadened within the last two decades, first in 2010, with the enactment of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Content Development Act No. 2 of 2010, in which the level of participation of Nigerians and Nigerian companies in the oil and gas industry is enhanced and protected. The second window came in 2017, when the local content protection, when the local content, when the local content protection was broadened from the oil and gas industry to cover procurement in the entire public sector by Executive Order O3 of 2016, where all ministries, departments, and agencies of the federal government are to grant preference to local manufacturers of goods and services providers in their procurement of goods and services. The third window driven by my ministry in 2018 and conveyed in the Executive Order 05 for planning and execution of project promotions of Nigerian content in contract science, engineering, and technology. Section 13 of the order explicitly states that MDAs should engage indigenous professionals in planning, design, and execution of national security projects, and consideration should only be given to a foreign professionals where it is certified by the appropriate authority that such exercise is not available in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to these policy and legal instruments put across by the federal government to advance the frontiers of indigenous engineering practitioners as well as entrenched professionalism for national development, government also made capital provisions in its annual budgets between, 200 and, between 2017 and 2021 to the tune of about 13 trillion naira, being about 27% of the total federal budget over the past five years for procurement of capital goods and services in the country at the federal level only. One can rightly guess that majority of the procurements were indeed engineering and engineering related in nature. Certainly, engineering and related professionals are the greatest beneficiaries economically with attendant multiplier social benefits of employment generation. May I at this junction, Mr. Chairman, reassure this 29th Engineering Assembly of continuous support by the federal government under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari towards the participation of indigenous professionals 
in our nation building. However, I challenge the assembly to ensure that engineering ethics, engineering ethics are strictly complied with. Capacity of practitioners as well as codes and standards are continually updated to support national development. I am convinced that with our collective and sincere commitment to nation building, Nigeria will be great and will turn to paradise in Africa. Once again, I commend the leadership of this assembly and wish you all fruitful deliberations while I look forward to the resolutions of 29th Engineering Assembly. God bless Nigeria. Dr. Obonaya Ono. Thank you very much, sir. Can we give him a better round of applause, please? Thank you. Next up, we have the representative of the Architects Registration Council of Nigeria, Arcon. Please join me in welcoming architect Wilson Agbonta. Architect Wilson Agbonka, please. Agbonta, please. You have one minute, sir. As she has rightly said, my name is architect Wilson Agbonta. I represent the president of the Act Registration Council of Nigeria, ACOM. We are at the moment organizing a program we call Architects Kolokwam at the Shehu Musaya Adwa Center. We had invited Koren. Unfortunately, we got a reply that you are having your program. That is not a problem. I have come to re-invite you for our program. Three things made me come for this program, which must be noted today. As a young, growing young boy in the island, my grandfather, who was in the British Army, took me to a very senior colleague of yours then, architect who had um, engineer Bimbe, and my grandfather walked into the house, into the sitting room. I walked into the sitting room. One careless worker of his equally walked into the sitting room. And the engineer quietly, smartly, the foot mat, he went to realign it to ensure that it was in its original state. That was the first time I knew who an engineer was. Then while in the University of Lagos, as a young architecture students, I was privileged to take a, a course, Applied and Pure Maths, under Professor, uh, I'll try to remember his name. This professor who taught me gave us an exam. In that exam, he said, imagine an imaginary point. From that imaginary point, a line terminates at point B. We should imagine that point to be point A. From point B, go to point C. Then he told us, he now noted the position vector, the unit vector. His name is Professor Adirogba of University of Lagos. He now said we should now do some calculations, do some analysis. Imagine I was a year one student. I managed to, as an architectural student who was gifted in fine arts, to handle my examinations, both in terms of sketchy form and equally added some element of calculations. What shocked me was that few weeks later, this, they, they told me that a professor of engineering was looking for me, Professor Adirogba. I said, for what? I was scared. What have I done? I know my dad gave me 500 naira, which I have spent. Well, I met him. He said, my son, I've gone through your paper. Please come to engineering. I now told my lecturer, they canceled me to remain in architecture, that I can always have relationship with engineers. But what struck me was that we got a letter from Koren recently, dated April 29th. That letter got to Akon office that same day. I want to thank the registrar of Koren for writing a letter. We're getting it that same day. It gave us the opportunity to respond to it that same day. That is the reason why I'm here. So my goodwill message 
When we read the letter, I had a problem. We had a problem. Problem of protocol. How do we arrange protocol? So whatever mistake I make, please pardon me as I read the Goodwill message. So Goodwill message from the president of Actor Restitution Council of Nigeria, architect Sir Oladipupo Gabriel Ajayi, FNI, on the occasion of the 29th current General Assembly, held from 9th to 11th August 2021 at the International Conference Center, ICC, FCT, Abuja. Like I said, please pardon me, His Excellency, President Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, representative of the Senate President, His Excellency, the Chief Host, Honorable Minister, Federal Capital Territory, Alhaji Muhammad Musa Bello. Without him, we cannot be here. His Excellency, Honorable Minister, Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Raji Babatunde Fashola San, our parent minister. Honorable Minister of State, Federal Minister of Works and Housing, and Narbubaka Aliu, Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Then the chairman of today's opening remarks, His Excellency, Executive Governor of Eboyin State, Engineer David Umaze Uma, Umahi, F, a Fellow of Nigerian Society of Engineers, Fellow NATE, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, who is very thorough. On few occasions, I've had to meet him, very thorough man. We were having Ezra Bond meeting not too long ago. Somebody carelessly did not sit where he was supposed to sit. That engineer has spotted it. Current president, engineer Ali Arabu, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Current vice president, engineer Venatius Igiri, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. It's important we consider him if the president is not there, he is there. The current registrar, engineer, Professor Joseph Oguiri, no wonder he wrote that same day, we got it that same day. He's indeed a good engineering professor. Then members of council for the regulation of engineering in Nigeria, the president of Nigerian Society of Engineers, royal fathers, here present, members of the high table, distinguished engineers here present, invited guests here present, gentlemen of the press. Permit me to still recognize the police because I saw them en enlisted in your program. And the military personnel you have invited. Gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the president of ACOM, I would say I am glad to be part of this epoch-making occasion by the Council of the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, current, inviting all engineering practitioners and stakeholders in the, private and, in the public and private sector to rub minds on issues of national development. ACOM has been invited to your 29th current engineering assembly to give a goodwill message Akon and Koren are regulatory bodies in the built environment of Nigeria. It is on this premise, it is on the premise above, that on behalf of architectural profession, I wish to express my delight to the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren, organizers of this gathering to brainstorm on the team, advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development with various sub-teams carefully selected to effectively address the team with the sole aim of the robust engineering profession that will be a strong catalyst for promoting technical and vocational educational training, adapting the outcome-based engineering education, implementation of continuing professional development for engineering practitioners in Nigeria, and providing solutions to the security challenges in Nigeria. We in ACOM strongly support your team and advise other professions within the built environment in Nigeria to deploy their professional competence 
in teams and sub-teams of this nature. This engineering assembly has been planned to provide a vital contact point between practitioners, industry, and the general public. And we in Akon are aware that your council has provided opportunity for exhibition of products and services during this assembly. And do hope that you all will take advantage of these opportunities. On behalf of the architectural profession, I want to sincerely thank you for extending this invitation to us in Akon and wish you all a fruitful deliberation. And use this opportunity to re-invite the current president to our program we are presently having at Sheo Musa Yadwa. If he cannot come, send a representative. I thank you all. God bless Koren. God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arakon. We do appreciate you for keeping to time. <laughs> very quickly, I'll call uh, on Engineer Ben to take the next phase of the program. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a little adjustment in our program to accommodate our chief host, the chief host of today's event, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, His Excellency Raji Fashola, S.A.N. He's represented by the Minister of State for Works and Housing, a very distinguished engineer. Engineer Abubakar D. Aliu, fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Please join me as I welcome to stage the Honorable Minister of State for Works for his goodwill message. Let's put our hands together for him, please. Uh, sorry, I have to stampede and uh, attend the program. I have another program to attend to, which uh, I'm getting late. Uh, so I apologize uh, for disrupting the rhythm that we have already established. And I was actually enjoying it, more especially uh, our last speaker from <laughs> so I am here as a guest and uh, as a representative of my colleague Baba Tunde Raji Fashola the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing who was looking up to uh, uh, forward to this day, but unfortunately, because of call of duty, he has to be in the, uh, Bodo Boni in the south south to inspect one of our uh, very, very important project there. So he left since yesterday, so he asked me to represent him here. So uh, I'm here as his substitute, but I'm not taller than him. I am engineer Abubakar D. Aliu, an engineer, your colleague. So uh, in absentia, the chairman of this occasion, uh, engineer David Nze Umahi, governor of Ebony State, the representative of the Senate President, my brother, uh, 
Alhaji Adamu Alero, our Chairman, Senate Committee on Works. The Chairman President of uh, Koren, Engineer Ali Erabiu. At this point, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. I'm going to read the speech of the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola. I am honored to address you as the distinguished chief host on this auspicious occasion of the 29th Koren Engineering Assembly. This occasion cannot come at a better time than now that our country, Nigeria, and indeed Sub-Saharan Africa are seriously challenged infrastructural-wise. I want to congratulate the current for maintaining the culture of organizing the assembly every year, except for last year due to the pandemic. Programs like these help the engineering practitioners to network, gain valuable points as part of their continuous professional development and for the industries to exhibit their products. It is also an opportunity to provide solutions to the problems bedeviling the nation. I also want to put on record that the country's infrastructural challenges cannot be overcome without the active participation of engineering practitioners and the government had put in place so many policies to ensure that the engineering practitioners take their rightful place toward the strategic development of Nigeria. This year's team, advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism and national development is very timely and apt as this administration views infrastructural development as a key bedrock of rapid social and economic advancement of Nigeria. Talking about advancing frontiers and entrenching professionalism in any profession, the engineer stands out as any deviation from absolute compliance to professional ethics or misconduct affects safety and security of lives. This calls for all engineering practitioners to adopt international best practice in the provision of infrastructure development, maintenance, and management. Koren has the, regulate, as the regulatory body has a critical role to play in this regard. Achieving the goals of this team comes by continuous training in line with Koren's newly adopted outcome-based education, OBE, and continuing professional development, CPD, as a means through which all engineering practitioners and firms will obtain their licenses for effective performance. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, while commissioning a 1.5 megawatt PV solar power microgrid system and energy retrofitting of the Ministry of Works and Housing Headquarters in Abuja, restated his administration commitment to infrastructural development. He disclosed that the federal government has also commenced the competitive procurement process for a 150 megawatts solar power project along Maiduguri axis. Mr. President, I need your attention, you and your neighbor, please. Thank you. This, he said, is geared towards addressing the issue of electricity supply along the axis while enhancing grid stability through the provision of clean renewable energy. Likewise, while commissioning and handing over the recently completed Zobe Regional Water Treatment Plant project located at Dusima local government area of Katsina State, Mr. President reiterated his commitment to give priority to infrastructure development, improve water supply, sanitation, and hygiene to better the lives of Nigerians. Mr. President's commitment towards and advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners in Nigeria is manifestly demonstrated in Executive Order Number 5, EO5, 
by which all ministries, departments, and agencies, MDS, of government were directed to engage indigenous professionals in the planning, design, and execution of national security projects and maximize in-country capacity in all contracts and transactions with science, engineering, and technology components. The EO5 borrows from the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act 2010, otherwise known as the Local Content Act. But while the Local Content Act applies only to the oil and gas industry, the EO5 covers all science, engineering, technology, and innovation-based works and projects. President Muhammad Buhari's commitment to infrastructure leaves no one in doubt about his desire to rapidly grow Nigeria's economy. The outline of that infrastructure development is made clear by the fact that the Federal Minister of Works and Housing is currently managing over 800 contracts for roads and bridges covering over 13,000 kilometers of the 35,000 plus kilometers of federal highways and bridges owned by the federal government. In every state of Nigeria today, there is a road project, a bridge project, or a housing project, or all combined under construction. Ladies and gentlemen, the important role of infrastructure, quantity, and quality to our national prosperity makes the role of the engineer most competing as indeed the level of professionalism the engineer demonstrates. The unprofessional and or unethical engineer must be promptly sanctioned in accordance with the rule of law to prevent them from adversely affecting our national prosperity objectives. I learned some engineers were recently re, uh, de registered for professional misconduct to serve as deterrent for others. I believe these sanctions need to be carried out regularly and necessary to avoid infrastructure failures. The Federal Ministry of Works and Housing will eagerly await the outcome of this year's deliberation on how to scale up and deepen what has already started. The Buhari government has now commenced the process of developing a new infrastructure master plan up to 2030, and this has progressed significantly. I have no doubt in my mind about the positive direction Nigeria's economy is heading with this investment in infrastructure. I therefore wish you a very engaging and productive deliberation. Finally, I wish all a successful, I wish you all a successful assembly and to encourage current not to raise on their oars, but to continue working hard until our dear country is out of the wood in terms of development. Thank you very much. Uh, on a sad note, let me join the president of Corin in commiserating with the families of and uh, all of us uh, over the loss of our colleagues. Most recently, uh, the one that happened yesterday of Professor Babashow, whom I know closely. I pray Almighty Allah forgive him and the grant him alternative feed house. Uh, let me seize this opportunity once again to enjoin all road users and Nigerians that the situation of our roads all over the country, as you have heard in the speech, we are handling over 800 road construction and bridges. That may mean Nigeria is a construction site everywhere. And we are sharing the space with the handlers of these this projects. Uh, work going on, and we are committing on the same road. In some areas, we have finished some sections and opened them up 
for traffic, just like from Abuja to Kaduna to Kano, whereby when you are driving on the sections that we have completed, you may even forget that the road is under construction, but you don't have full capacity to, to drive on because of the constriction that we have to finish uh, one carriageway before we open the other. So the ones that are open, I urge everyone, I enjoin you to drive carefully. Don't overspeed on them because they are smooth. Don't do that because you are having only one lane and there are a lot of traffic on that road. The level of service, though it's in terms of the, the, the surfacing, is high, but if you consider every other factor, still we are not yet there. You have to deal with a, a serious uh, a, a restriction of uh, side distances. You have to be very careful. And this is what causes all these uh, numerous accidents that we are having. And Abuja Kaduna uh, Kano is one of the accident prone roads that we have received information from uh, uh, road safety. So, and this is basically due to the uh, overspeeding because of the sections that we have opened. You will find people overtaking recklessly. And another thing is, a driver with a car is only one person. And that car, the minimum seat in a small car is, uh, including the driver, is five. So apart from the driver, they have five lives. And you cannot depend on the driver and allow him to drive the way he wanted to drive. You should also participate in the driving. Not necessarily holding the steering together, but you should be constantly on the watch. Once he's trying to do overtaking maneuver in such dangerous areas, you should caution him because he is driving with you in the car. So this is my, 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 my appeal and my advice to all Nigerians. We are not yet there, but we are trying our best constantly to ensure that we finish all these roads and we are getting the full support that we needed from Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we need your support also to please cooperate with us in the Ministry of Works and Housing we have our outfit that maintains those areas that are bad, which we have not yet gone there to uh, reconstruct. The, the, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, who the MD is here. And we are having also support from our legislator. As you can see, we have uh, the, the, the Chairman Senate Committee uh, on uh, our works, whom we are working closely to ensure we provide uh, a, a good roads all over this country. But we appeal to all of you, as you go back home, take this advice as you drive back from this conference. Ensure that you be the second, third, fourth, and fifth driver in that car. Don't just allow the driver and to do whatever he likes by himself. Caution him. Participate in the driving, because your life is involved. Thank you very much, and uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We do sincerely appreciate you. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, the address by the host, who is the Honorable Minister, Federal Capital Territory, Alhaji Mohammed Musabelu who is ably represented here this morning by the Chief of Staff to the Honorable Minister, Mohammed Bashir Mayburno. Can we give him a round of applause as he comes up for his address, please? We can do that better. Please keep appreciating him until he gets here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, His Excellency Engineer David Mweze Umahi, Governor of Abonyi State and Chairman of the 29th Engineering Assembly, the representative of the President of the Senate, distinguished Senator Adamu Alero, former Governor of Kebbi State and former Minister of the FCT. His Excellency, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babutunde Raji Fashola San, represented by the Minister of State of Works, Engineer Abu Bakar Aliu, FNSE. President of Koran, President of Nigerian Society of Engineers, Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished fellows and members of the engineering profession, council members of Koran, distinguished speakers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, may I convey the apology of the Honorable Minister of the FCT of his inability to be here in person. Uh, he has asked me to read his uh, address as follows. I am very delighted to be here for the 29th Engineering Assembly of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren. The Koren Engineering Assembly, I am aware, is the largest annual gathering of engineering practitioners inclusive of engineers, technologists, technicians, and craftsmen, as well as engineering firms in Nigeria. It also provides a platform for professional interactions and technological innovations, advancement and challenges confronting the profession while preferring solutions for same. It is therefore my pleasure on behalf of the FCT administration, and indeed all residents of the Federal Capital Territory, to welcome to Abuja all members of Koren and other distinguished guests who have traveled from outside the FCT to be at this assembly. Abuja, our nation's capital city, is one of the best planned and constructed cities around the continent and indeed the world. Her skyline, highways, bridges and other beautiful and functional engineering infrastructure are the result of the hard work, dedication and innovations of members of your profession over the last four and a half decades. The history of the FCT is replete with the works of individual engineering practitioners as well as engineering firms. And as we continue in our quest to build the FCT for our collective dreams, the essentiality of your role indeed cannot be overstated. That is why the theme for this year's assembly, which is advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development, is quite appropriate and just as timely. The engineering profession, by its very nature, demands precision, where even the minutest of errors can cost huge sums in reparations or even lead to catastrophic consequences. It is therefore imperative that engineering practitioners in Nigeria are professionally equipped via trainings and certifications to ensure that only the truly qualified are able to practice. Consequently, I call on this assembly to evolve an enduring framework for the entrenchment of professionalism in the practice of engineering in Nigeria. On our part, we shall continue to reciprocate the gesture of the Council and its members towards creating synergy within the, wherein the collective resources and strengths of all stakeholders will be harnessed in the task of nation building. It is my sincere hope that participants will bring their experiences to bear on improving the practice of the profession for sustainable national development. I once again welcome you all to Abuja and wish you a productive and rewarding gathering. Thank you for your valued attention and may God bless us all. Mohammed Musa Bello. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right then. We can do it better. Please appreciate him. Very quickly, in the next one minute, we're going to take a goodwill message from the representative, from the executive governor of Plateau State, ably represented here this morning, 
by engineer Sunday Hayat FNSC MNI, the head of service, Plato State, a past council member of Koran. Please, a round of applause for him as he comes forward. The more we cheer him, the quicker he comes up. So you have two minutes for your goodwill message, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The chairman of this, of the 29th General Assembly, the governor of Ibuin State, ministers that are here, the chairman of, the president of Corin and other presidents, former presidents that are here, a real father, permit me to stand on the already established protocol. On behalf of the Governor of Plateau State, Right Honorable Samu Bakola Long, who doubles as the Chairman of Northern Governors Forum, I stand here to congratulate Koren uh, from the President to Custom members and to all of us that are here for the visibly resilience of engineers in this country. We have passed recently through trying times of COVID and engineers have played a serious role in ensuring that this country is safe. And from today's participation, I'm convinced that engineers are actually resilient because of the large turnout of engineers at this 29th Engineering Assembly. So congratulations to all engineers in this country. The governor of Plateau State will have been here. He was here, he left yesterday, back to Joss. So he has uh, asked me to stand to represent him and to felicitate with all of us that are here. We all know engineering plays a vital role in providing infrastructure for our country. Uh, the governor of Plateau State Recognizing that uh, has continued, had made it a matter of policy to continue with the existing projects that he inherited. He's one of the very few governors that actually believes in continuity because that has actually bedeviled our country in the sense that every governor comes and starts practically his own projects, leaving the projects that were embarked on by his predecessor. But he has continued with those projects, apart from the projects that he has equally embarked on. And in the area of renewable energy, uh, Plateau State, for those who have been to Plateau of late, would know that Plateau State is one of the most lead countries, uh, uh, the Plateau State capital, that is just, is one of the most well lit state capitals in this country now. Uh, the governor has completed almost over 200 kilometers of solar street lights with a local indigenous company, Blue Camel. I think, uh, I'm happy uh, NIEEE had identified with Blue Camel and had given him several awards. It's a company that's doing very well. It's indigenous, a young man. If you come to just, you'll see that's the product of uh, indigenous capacity. I will not end this goal without uh, making, a ch throwing a challenge to all of us that are here. Uh, the National Council on Works, over time, has spoken about establishing a road form and a road board in this country. It's been there for over 20 years. We are yet to establish a road form. We are yet to establish a road board. And we know that it is only when we do that that we would have solved the problem of providing funds for road maintenance in this country. The MD of FEMA is here, and he has been the forefront of it. Equally, people in practitioners in the works industry who have who are serving in the various ministries of works, including federal, federal, have been there, and up to almost more than 20 years we are still paying lip service to it. It is when we come together 
and we'll create this board and this fund that we would be able to have roads just like every other country in the world. On this note, I want to again felicitate with all of us and I wish us a successful engineering assembly. May God be with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for keeping to time. We appreciate you. Lastly, on the list of um, goodwill messages, please join me welcome the representative, the representative of the Speaker of House of Representatives. Uh, join me welcome, uh, Honorable, sorry, join me welcome Honorable Mohammed Ali Wudil, FNSC, Fellow Academy of Engineering, Chairman, House Committee on Labor, Employment and Productivity. Can we give him a round of applause as he comes forward, please? We can do it better. He has the next one minute to do this. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The chairman of this uh, assembly, the current president, my friend and colleague, my fellow dignitaries, and my fellow engineers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm here standing on behalf of the speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, Honorable Ablaw Kim Femi Bajia Bihamila. One, his goodwill message is simple. One, to congratulate engineers and the Korean president for the 29th Korean Assembly and also for the role engineers are playing in the development of this country. And two, also to assure the Korean Assembly that the National Assembly, more especially House of Reps, is always ready to support the Korean in whatever legislation the, the Korean required. And the Korean president will attest to the fact that Korean amendment was carried out by the National Assembly with regards to what the Korean is required to enhance its activities. On my own part, as an engineer, the themes of this year's assembly is advancing the frontiers of engineering practitioners and entrenching professionalism for national development. This theme is telling us something, that engineering is a profession that is required in any endeavor of human development. Mr. President, I think this professional, uh, uh, professional, professionalism for national development cannot be achieved without the participation of engineers in politics. I keep on saying this because most of the policies or programs of, Nigeria's, of Nigeria is done throughout politics. So, Mr. President, I want us to also include politicking. I'm not saying Korean will, be, uh, will participate actively, but the members who are willing, who are willing to join so as to ensure that engineers are involved in each program or in each policy of this country. As I I used to give example that in the National Assembly, I doubt much if we have up to 30 engineers. So we used to suffer some kind of, I can say, persecution because we lack our members in the National Assembly. So that you will see engineering committees are not headed by engineers. Unlike lawyers, there is no any committee that is for lawyers that is given to anybody. Even in terms of the executive, I've never seen where a minister of, uh, a minister of justice is non-lawyer. Non so please, 
my colleagues are enjoying, some of you who are willing to participate in the development of this country through politicking. Mr. President, that's my own take. And I thank you very much and I congratulate you for this wonderful assembly. Thank you very much. You have been watching the 29th edition of the Korean Engineering Assembly from the International Conference Center here in Abuja. Korean mandated by Decree 55 of 1970 for 29 years through this engineering assembly has been promoting and ensuring the highest standard of professionalism in engineering practice in Nigeria. With over 3,000 in participant, in attendance rather, the keynote speaker urged them to know that constant desire to add value to other and the society without compromising their own value is what makes them an engineer. I am Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. We urge you to remain with us as we switch to other uh, scheduled programs on the largest TV network in Africa, the NTA.